Hi, I'm Mike. And today on Our Wyoming Life, we take a look at the state of the hay on the ranch. It's the future of the ranch. It's what the cows are gonna eat all winter long. And there's some obstacles that we have to overcome. We'll talk about it and it's all coming up today on Our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Hey guys, if you would really like to support our channel, head on over to ourwyomonglife.com. You may not know it, but you can buy beef, pork, beef jerky, all kinds of t-shirts, hats, all kinds of stuff to help support the ranch. And right now we've got some great sales going on, including 10% off chuck roast, arm roast, and ground pork. So go check that out on the website. And you can also save yourself 15% just by becoming a Patreon supporter and it's all about supporting local agriculture. If you don't wanna help us out and support our ranch, support another local ranch. Buy beef and pork, do it local, and know where your food comes from. And I'll give you a hint, it's not the grocery store. Hey there gang, welcome back to Our Wyoming Life, uh, where we like to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Today we are taking a look at haying. It is just around the bend. Uh, I'm guessing that we're about a week away from starting haying and there's a few reasons behind that that I'm going to share with you as we move through. But what we're doing today is actually going out to take a look at some of the hay fields, actually probably all the hay fields. We're going to talk about uh, hay production and cattle usage of that hay that we're going to make uh, that'll get us through the entire winter season. We do have a few obstacles, like I mentioned, uh, to overcome this year. And the major one that we're dealing with is called yellow clover. This is yellow clover. Most people know it as sweet clover, uh, but what most people don't know is it can be highly toxic to livestock. It's actually got a bitter taste, so you can feed it, but they need to get used to the bitterness before they'll even go after it. We've got cows out in the field now that don't have any interest in it because there's a lot better stuff out there for them to eat. However, once we harvest this, this winter, they're not, not gonna have much choice and they're gonna have to eat it. And we're gonna have to make sure it's safe for them to eat. And when it comes to legumes on the ranch, we basically have two that we have to deal with. Now, the sweet clover, we talked about. And then we also have alfalfa. And we don't have fields that are full of alfalfa. However, we do have uh, patches of alfalfa throughout the fields. You can see them. They're actually these purple flowers back here behind us. And actually, to tell you the truth, right now, the season that we're in, or the day that we're in, I would actually call this about peak time to get out here and start harvesting these if I was harvesting just sweet clover or alfalfa. But the problem is that we've had so much rain and it's been so wet that our natural grasses, which are wheat grass and brome and needle grass, really haven't had a chance to completely head out yet. And when the plants do head out, that's when all that good nutrition heads into the, well, heads into the head of the plant. So when we start talking about like crested wheat grass, and that's what this is right here, that is the head and that's a pretty small head on that thing, uh, which means it hasn't fully headed out yet. And there's a lot of grass out here that hasn't even started to head out yet. And you can see that as we get down here and look a little bit closer. All this stuff right here, no heads. A little sweet clover down in there, a little baby plant. And while we do have some heads on some stuff, most of this in here hasn't headed out yet. So we have a timing issue, and that's with the natural grasses aren't ready to be harvested. However, the alfalfa and the sweet clover are ready to be harvested. Sweet clover actually adds volume to our hay bales. It's gonna, it's gonna increase the volume of what we harvest by you know, maybe even as much as half. We do have our problems, like I mentioned earlier, with sweet clover. Uh, while it, do, it is a nitrogen fixer, so it's gonna add nitrogen into our soil, which is great, so does alfalfa, as they're both legumes. But we do have a lot of problems with sweet clover. One of the problems that we have is, as we start to dry up, it's actually gonna get woody. Um, that means that, let's take a look at another one here. I'm gonna destroy another little plant. Uh, right now, it's pretty flexible and pliable. See, I can move it around. No problem, but over time, and especially once we start to dry up a little bit, which is coming, even though we've had uh, record amounts of precipitation this year, uh, it's gonna dry up and it's gonna get woody, it's gonna get stemmy, and then the cows really aren't gonna eat it, and it'll cause all kinds of problems like lump jaw and all kinds of issues that we don't wanna deal with. So, as long as the rain keeps falling uh, before we harvest, we should be okay, it should keep it pretty dang tender, which for me is a good thing. 
I want this to stay as tender as possible because we have a few more days of rain in the forecast before we're actually gonna be able to get out here and harvest. Clover is the reason behind that. I, if, if we had what rain we have in the forecast right now and we just had alfalfa to deal with, I'd probably be out here cutting hay, but this clover is what is causing this year's problems. And when I say they're problems, they're not really problems. Uh, this is a problem that is easily solved as long as you think a little bit ahead. And that's what we have to do. Because we have rain on the way, uh, we don't wanna start cutting because we do not in any way want to put up wet sweet clover or yellow clover. The reason behind that is, is if sweet clover molds at all, it actually releases a chemical which can be deadly to cattle. So <laughs> this, this is that tight rope that we're walking on right now. And what we want to do is when we do get into cutting, we want to make sure that this stuff is completely dry when we start to bale it. We're not doing baleage. We're not doing silage. We've never done that out here. We are dry land farming, even though we've had a lot of rain this year, but we could probably put up some baleage or some silage this year if we wanted to. We don't, we're not equipped for it. We don't have the equipment, but this year, we're gonna just play this very carefully. Uh, we can't play it by ear, although we have in the past. This year, we're being very, very proactive and making sure that our animals are safe. So this field that we're standing in is probably of maybe about 10% uh, sweet clover. That we can deal with. This field behind me, another hay field, another 70 acre hay field, is probably less than 5% sweet clover, which is pretty easy to deal with. But we have other fields that have a lot more sweet clover in them and more than we've ever had to deal with before on the ranch. Let's go check one out. This field behind me uh, is known as Jim's Field. Uh, Jim McHugh was our neighbor. Fortunately, he passed away a few years ago, but we were able to buy this 160 acre field from him uh, before he did pass away. And it has become uh, probably our biggest hay field to date. However, it's always been probably one of our lowest yielding hay fields. And that's because it needs a lot of improvement. This year with all the clover, well, you can see there are tons of clover out in this field. Is it over 50% though? That's the big question. Feel, cows that eat are, they're, cows that feed on a, a diet that's over 50% legumes have a much higher risk of bloat. That's our first problem with sweet clover. Sweet clover, when cows digest it, actually releases gas. And that gas and foam and everything else can fill up a cow's rumen. They have no way of getting rid of that. That's what bloat is. And it can kill a cow very, very fast. So we want to make sure that they don't receive over 50% of any legume, whether it's uh, sweet clover or alfalfa, which there is zero alfalfa up in this field, but there's definitely lots of sweet clover. But how do you tell what 50% really is? And there's two different ways to look at it. You can do 50% by weight or 50% by stem count. And you know what? I don't know how much alfalfa weighs. I don't know if it's gonna be 50% in this field, but I can look at the plants that are in this field. And I can take a look underneath the clover because there's a lot of grass in here that is gonna counteract what the clover is doing. So as we look at the grass, we again, we see a lot of these native grasses. Um, and they are, I think they're outnumbered by clover, but at the same time, there's still a lot of it in here and it's mixed throughout the clover. So while this field may not be less than 50% clover, it's definitely less than 75, let's say. So now as we take a look at some other fields, now we start thinking about how we can feed our cows to counteract that bloat. What do we have to mix together? Do we do a half bale from Jim's field and a half field, half a bale from another field? and then that way they are not getting 50%. This is, this is how we have to think. The other problem that we have with sweet clover, like I was saying earlier, is that we cannot put it up wet. It cannot mold. 
Once mold meets sweet clover, bad things start to happen. It actually produces a chemical that will inhibit the cow's ability to make vitamin K. Vitamin K is essential in blood clotting. So if you have a pregnant cow that gets a hold of some moldy legumes, even, even alfalfa is just as bad, or sweet clover or anything like that, um, then she has thinner blood, she can't clot, she has that calf, she starts bleeding, she could bleed out. It can also cause liver problems because of that uh, lack of vitamin K, just not anything you wanna deal with. So making sure that this is dry is something we're gonna talk about continually uh, through haying season, and uh, we'll make sure that our cows are as safe as they can be. So as we go ahead and we start taking a look at some other hay fields, uh, then we don't have anything that has this much clover in it, although this is 160 acres. Uh, if we get, a, a let's say, a bale an acre off of this, that's 160 bales that could be just sweet clover or 75% sweet clover. So we're trying to do a lot of this in our head uh, and on paper and trying to figure out where we're going to harvest from so that we get the best mix that we can. And it's a little tricky, but I think we can figure it out. It sure is pretty though, isn't it? Okay, we're gonna drive a few miles down the road because we're gonna head back to an 80 acre hay field that's the farthest hay field back and is almost the complete opposite of this field, we hope. Because if we have a field that's 75% legume or 75% sweet clover or alfalfa, we need another one that's 0% to counteract. We're still waiting on Bambi to have her calf. Uh, She's a little overdue. There is a chance she may have lost it somewhere along the line and we just didn't know about it. But uh, we're still kind of, there's a tinge of hope there. Uh, but however, you know, how, how, when days go by, the, the chances get lower and lower. She was pregnant at preg checking. We didn't have any other cows that sloughed or lost calves. So our hope is uh, that she's just way behind the curve, but only time will really tell. There is a cutoff coming up, and uh, once we pass that, there's no more hope for a calf from Bambi. But there is hope that we're gonna have hay. Since we're on our way down to that uh, farthest hay field, we have a little bit of a chance to chit chat a little bit. And so we have hay, we know we have hay. And in fact, if you've watched our state of the hay addresses from the past or previous years, we've actually gone out with a hula hoop and measured hay in the hay field and tried to come up with what our production will be. However, this year we know we're gonna have hay. There's really, we could go out and we could do the measurements and we could figure it out, know exactly what hay uh, we're gonna have, but it's not gonna change anything. We know we're gonna have hay. The big question that we have and the way we've been looking at things the last couple years is how much hay are we going to need? And for that, it's pretty easy to figure out. The basic gist is that we need 1,000 pounds of feed per cow per month, 1,000 pounds of hay. So we're gonna feed them for six months and if we take that and divide it by 2,000 pounds, we end up with about 300 tons that we need. Each bale weighs about 1,400 pounds. So our best guess tells us we need about 428 bales. We have 600 acres or so of hay yard that we can cut. So if, even if we average uh, one bale per acre, we're, we're gonna be plenty within that. So I'm not really worried about the yield, uh, but what I am worried about is making sure that we get enough bales to be able to feed for the winter. So my goal here this, this haying season is to put up about 500 bales. If we can put up 500 bales, it gives us a good buffer and hopefully we can get that, uh, that diversity in, in our bale makeup that we need to be able to make it safe for our cows, especially with Jim's field being so much clover up and in there. So that's where we're heading down to that field right now. So we're gonna take a look and see if it's gonna counteract uh, what we get. 
on our way there, we are actually going to begin our rotational grazing program as well. Now, here in northeast Wyoming, we only get one cutting of hay. So if you take that into rotational grazing, the cows basically are a, a living swather or a living mower, and they can go out and cut the grass once, and that's all they're going to get. So our rotational grazing actually consists of moving them through the ranch, making sure that there's enough forage left over in between each field when we move them again. So we are actually going to start moving them towards the back of the ranch, towards summer pasture, and the way we do that is by opening gates. They'll eventually work their way to where they need to be, and all we have to do is kind of keep, a, keep an eye on the grass that they're eating. This 400 acre field that they're in right now is actually considered the home pasture, and you can tell these guys really haven't eaten into it too far. The rain has managed to cause a lot of regrowth out here, which is great. But when we compare the home pasture, which I'm standing in now, to the cut across pasture, which we're gonna open up this gate behind us and let the cows work their way up this way, you're gonna really be able to say the difference in between the two fields and the amount that the animals have, have eaten. I love years like this because you can really tell where cows have eaten and where they haven't. During drought years, it all looks like it's been eaten. But right now, if we take a look at this side of the fence, now here's our fence right here. And on this side, this is stuff that the cows have eaten. It's actually pretty short, but there is a little bit of regrowth that's coming in. There's a lot still to eat in here. But when we start looking at the next field the cows are moving into, now this is the cut across. Nothing has been in here yet, and the cows are going to love it. Grass is nice and tall, very nutritious. Uh, you can actually see that it's been laid down by some of the wind, even by the, uh, the, the dew that's out here. So very cool. And one of the nice things is that I don't really have to push the cows up here. All I have to do is open the gate and they'll find their way. In fact, they're right down there, about three quarters of a mile, and they'll figure it out. They know what's going on. It's definitely not their first rodeo. <laughs> That's all I have to do is just open it up. They'll be moving into this field before we know it. And so will we, because we're going to take advantage of the cut across to get past the hay fields and uh, back to our farthest back hay field where we can take a look and see what that looks like. Cut across is not a huge pasture, but it's, uh, it's actually vital to the ranch because it allows the cows to move past the hay fields and not eat those hay fields as they're moving through until we can get them uh, hayed and get that stuff put up. So it also has its own little watering hole back here that thanks to all the rain and the moisture, uh, it's actually nice and full. As you can see, we've got clover just about everywhere, except for here. This is our 80 acre hay field. And yeah, there's a little bit of clover here and there, but <laughs> this is gonna be the hay field. Give it another week. Uh, and I think that this one is gonna kinda go a little wild and we're gonna end up be using this hay field to counteract the effect of everything else. We have clover. This is just something we have to deal with. But knowing how to deal with it, like they say, that's half the battle. The other half is actually getting out here and cutting. We need 500 bales, which for us can take a long time. Starting next week, we're gonna bring you guys along as we hay. The uh, state of the hay, well, honestly, I'm pretty optimistic, although we do have some storms on the way. We would be haying now if it wasn't for those storms. We've got a week of storms, about an inch of rain, and the possibility of hail. Hail 
is the great equalizer. We know we have enough hay out here to get us through this winter. Hale might have a different idea. And it's not the first time it happened. Back in, I wanna say 2019 maybe, we were cutting, we had hay down, we were baling, we were raking, we were doing it all. And a freak hailstorm came through and ended haying season for us that year. That was tough. My hope is this year, Mother Nature, Mother Nature plays along with us and hopefully she's on our side. So we are gonna move forward. We're gonna think positive. We're gonna know that we've got the hay to put up. We just have to get out here and get it done. We're pulling out the tractors, we're changing oil, we're getting new blades on the sickles, and we're gonna be cutting hay. And we're happy to bring you along with us as we do it. And we're gonna talk more about clover. We're gonna talk more about our feeding schedule. We're gonna talk more about how we're gonna counteract a lot of this stuff, even the weather is something that during haying, you, we have to put this stuff up dry. Like I said earlier, the, the clover has to be as dry as we can get it. Otherwise, we're putting the cows and our entire livelihood on the line, even the, the future of the ranch. So I'm gonna ask you to wish us luck. Leave a comment down below. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them in upcoming videos about haying. And we hope that you can come along with us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Looks like we got some schmutz on the, the screen there. We'll get that fixed up for you too. Thanks once again for coming along. Be sure to subscribe and uh, we can't wait to see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life.